My name is Kathleen Murphy and I will be reading Vacuous by Rosaline McDonough. Vacuous. It's Wednesday. Three items to buy. Toothpaste, deodorant and sanitary pads. My eyes are tired, my energy low. Saying sentences out loud to hear myself, to make sure I'd be understood. My speech is slurred and low. Automatically making a note on my phone that would be easy to access in the supermarket. The journey to the supermarket is 10 minutes. It's cold and damp outside. Putting on a coat or carrying an umbrella is too much effort. My tracksuit, green, has a hood. Pulling it up over my unwashed and unbrushed hair, exhausted and unfocused. My body jolts as the front wheels of my chair hit the curb. It's just after lunchtime. The supermarket is almost empty. At the entrance, delivery men are placing vegetables and various cleaning products on carts. The electric doors repeatedly open and close. The carts are blocking the beam. It takes about five minutes for one of the delivery men to notice me. Basket or no basket? The items are small. They could be carried to the till, then put in my backpack. The music's loud. The smell of cheap, sugary sweets mixed with fresh bread is nauseating. The staff seem unfamiliar. A woman in a beige coat is standing in the tile tree's aisle. She looks at me and shouts, Those are up too high. Let me get them for you. She doesn't wait for my answer. It wasn't a question. She places sanitary pads on my knee and attempts to engage me in conversation. She's put her foot in front of my wheel. Moving my head from side to side, pinting at my mouth, the woman moves her foot, whispering to herself, God love you. Moving slowly around each aisle, the colours of the products bringing me calmness. The light is bright, clashing with my darkness. All that training, the independent living skills, the value of money, the prices, what were essential items and luxury items. The courses are mandatory. The training was gendered, domestic, with a strong focus on hygiene. None of my non-disabled friends received any of this training. Remembering the slalom course, that sports day long ago, I knocking over all the cones, too slow, my team lost. The girls were raging with me for being so dopey. Tiredness makes my eyes seem vacant, each looking in a different direction. My body is bent over, my head hanging, the effort of consistently having to pull it up is too much. Moving my eyes from the shelves and following a pattern on the floor, tiles help me to relax. Pulling up beside the cleaning products, there is the box with the child lock, the one with the Tide pods. Opening it furtively while scanning for a camera, my hands reach into the box and grab the squishy, rubbery, liquid plastic items. The sensation is thrilling. The feel of the liquid, soft and moving, yet not going anywhere. The colour, indigo blue, the viscosity of the heavy liquid, allow myself two minutes of this pleasure. Careful, my nails are sharp. Dig too deeply and the pods will split open. The liquid would spill between my fingers, onto my palms, like hand cream. Restraining myself took effort. The bleach in the pink bottle. Looking at it for a long time. The cap. The child lock. Imagining the weight of it. Lifting it onto my knee. Remembering a time when a bottle of bleach would always be in my handbag. To clean tables and utensils. Public phones. Exposed services. Swallowing it. Four different occasions. The hospital warned that if it happened again, it would damage my brain more. Thinking about how much I miss all those destructive rituals, the planning, the taking, the possibility of death. My family would always make sure that bleach was out of my reach. Those other spray products with the nozzles were no good. At the till, hearing the loud voices of the woman in the beige coat, the familiar anxiety rises in me. The transaction, the payment, the begging of the three items, my inner monologue saying, Fuck you, fuck. The woman nods to the young man on the tail with familiarity. Suddenly she's handling my deodorant, toothpaste and pads. Fidgeting with my wallet, pulling out my credit card, our eyes meet, my blood boiling. The familiar feeling rising out of my body, watching the events from the ceiling, handing over my credit card. The young man moves out from his tail and hangs my shopping on the wheelchair. The woman smiles while putting her hand on my arm and shoulder, applying pressure. My body aches and recoils. The spasms in my arms start. The woman's grip gets tighter. My breath quickens. The woman is restricting my natural responses to fear and pain. Passivity engulfs me. Frustration, rage and tears are surging up inside of me. 
The young man twists his head towards the woman, then back to me, but no words pass between them. The woman's face is in my space. Her nose is close. Her perfume is clawing. Her booming voice shouts over my head at the young man. We've one of these at home.